Okay, well, we're trying to get this live stream going. Hope everything is working correctly. Well, I'm going to play a little tune called Up a Lazy River. <laughs> there uh gosh i hope you guys are all doing well <laughs> you know wes just did a test and everything's working great and then we went to do it and then our streaming software said oh we're we've got some problems right now and uh, it may work it may not so now we're just going direct to youtube which i guess is working fine so uh maybe we should always be doing this one less thing to deal with. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me and uh, welcome to our live stream. That was up a lazy river. And uh, let me start, uh, that is a, a tune I just arranged. I've been wanting to do that tune for literally decades and never did. And when we got back from the Chet Atkins Society, I don't know. I was just thinking of that tune, and uh, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit down and do it. And the tune um, has got harmony in it that Ted Green used to call riverboat harmony. And it's, you know, these kind of things where you're back cycling and you're sidestepping, um, even on... Uh, and those things... little things there. Um, anyway, and I just did a lesson on the song. So um, give me about... Uh, 
a day here or the, the end of today, and we'll get it uploaded to the library. So if you're into it, uh, you can pick it up. I, I love that song. Mills Brothers, um, you know, it was written by Hoagie Carmichael, who did Georgia. So it's, it's just a great little tune. And the Mills Brothers is the version I always remember by mom playing that record, as well as her playing it on the piano. And uh, <clears throat> then there, of course, is the Bobby Darin version, which kind of is... Just up more tempo. So I was just kind of improvising around the changes, just messing around. So anyway, here's what we got in store today. We're going to talk about uh, the Chet Atkins uh, Society, uh, Chet Atkins Appreciation Society Convention that Gail and I went to. And we just had a terrific blast there. And uh, I would encourage everybody to go to that. Matter of fact, go, go make your reservations right now because it's one of the most musical events you'll ever go to that uh, you can get one, uh, real close up to some of these wonderful players. And you know who I met there that, that was very cool is a guy that I just really loved his arrangements and it's Guy Van Dusen. I have this book here called Stride Guitar, and it's got arrangements in there that are really tough. But I tell you about them, they're also really musical. And uh, so I got to meet him and talk with him for a little bit, as well as John Knowles. And John Knowles, wonderful player. Um, uh, you know, the, all these guys were friends of Chet Atkins. And the love there for Chet Atkins is just really, really appreciated. So uh, I got to uh, talk with him for a little bit. And I saw my old friend Doyle Dykes there. Um, and, of course, when Doyle plays, it's a stellar event. It's a stellar event when he plays. And uh, so that, that was really cool. There were some fantastic players there, not to mention Tommy Emmanuel. And uh, man, <laughs> he, what an energetic guy. And he plays with everybody. And uh, you know what's so cool about him? He doesn't have to be the center of attention all the time. He does his single man show, but he'll play with people. They'll, they'll uh, you know, he'll invite people and he will back them up and, and just jam with them. And just have fun. And uh, so he's not uh, above, you know, he's not, doesn't have his head in the clouds at all. Wonderful, wonderful guy and uh, fantastic player. So, yeah. And then, of course, I got to meet, uh, you know, I've talked to him on the phone several times, Bruce Foreman. And Bruce and I got to play together. You know, it was funny. They they had us, uh, Mark Pritchard, the organizer of it, and they, this was our their 37th event. 37 years they've been doing this. And uh, I got to meet him and, and stuff, and we talked for a, quite a while. And uh, he, uh, there was, uh, Tommy was playing, I think, at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the big stage, mm -hmm. and they have two stages, a big stage and a little stage. And uh, nobody wanted to do the little stage because they didn't want to play opposite Tommy. They don't want to miss him and stuff and all that. So uh, and uh, so anyway, I did it. And then Bruce Foreman came and joined me and we jammed. And that was really fun. Also, so yeah, there we are. Thank you. 
play old blues there. Let's hear a little bit of blues. to our uh, camp this year, this next year. And uh, what a player, man. What a mu very musical cat and just really fun to play with. Funny guy, too. Um. <laughs> so anyway, also, I was really, really super happy to meet student of mine. Now I say an old student. He's, uh, I, I've known him for about, uh, I've known of him and you know, I've never met him in person until the uh, convention, but uh, I've seen him on YouTube. And, and when I first saw him, he was 11 years old and uh, now he's 22. And there he is, Parker Hastings. And uh, he did a little seminar. He's, he's, He's become a golden boy of the Jet Atkins Society deal. Um, why don't you turn the volume up on that? Clips, Wes. We had several clips with the, us playing together. There were a couple of them just to give you an idea what we did. But anyway, uh, Parker is a uh, really gifted, gift. Well, here he is now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anyway, so uh, <laughs> anyway, he's a great, great player. And if you go on YouTube, uh, you can see if you type in the the where I when I first met Parker was I was looking on the internet and I was trying to find I had put uploaded uh, Jingle Bell Rock and uh, I was trying to find it again. I wanted to hear it again, and so. Jingle Bell Rock and, and Parker Hastings, and my name was on there too. And I thought, what the heck? So I turned it on, and here it is, 11-year-old kid playing one of the hardest songs I know how to play, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, however it goes. Anyway, it's got the walking bass line and everything. And this little boy is doing it. And I, I just I, I was blown away. I said, Gail, come here, look at this. And uh, so anyway, um, he said that um, uh, when, when we when we saw him, we got a hold of him and his parents and sent him some uh, gift certificate and stuff. But then he discovered Chet Atkins and, and thumb picking and all that. So he went uh, went that direction. Although when he he went to the first Chet Atkins uh, convention, he was still you know eleven years old. And the first person he met was a, he said, was a guy named Bob Saxon who plays, played with everybody up, you know, under the sun. And he played him the arrangement of um, that one. So he's just a little boy playing this. And, and so Bob, like, took him under his wing, introduced him to everybody. And uh, so now he's been there ever since. And so he's played with Tommy and everybody. So he's got a brilliant career ahead of him. Uh, so anyway, that was fun. Also met up with my old friend, Pat Flynn. Pat Pat and I uh, go way back to high school. Pat played with the New Grass Revival and became a, mu a producer and a studio musician for like I don't know, 25 years in Nashville. And so we always fun to catch up with him. So we had a wonderful time. We also saw some new new people. There's there's these new pickers out there, man. They call them instead of young guns, they call them young thumbs. And uh, they're just Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed on steroids. Holy crap! I saw this uh, picture on on Facebook here. <laughs> oh yeah, she was there. That's her harp guitar, Muriel Anderson. That's a harp up there. Yeah, what it is is uh, it's you know it, you don't fret it, but each one of those strings are tuned to whatever key you're playing in, you know. So then you you come back and you whip out. You see all that? There's strings above the sixth string, which are bass strings, and the ones below, which are treble strings. So it's oh, wow. pretty crazy, huh? There are a lot of strings. If you, you spend most of your time tuning that and then the other part playing out of tune. So, man, it's I've got a lot of strings. Good grief. Ah, string city. But anyway, she was there and what a wonderful, wonderful player. Um, so really, yeah, there's Tommy and and Parker. That's oh, you got more pictures, Wes, you can show us. Uh, uh I don't know who. Who oh, many of these guys there's, are. But. There's Tommy. That was John Knowles back there a little bit. Um, and this, uh, I forget who these guys were. Yeah, these are all just kind of pictures from there. From Facebook, some guy on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got Tommy and Parker as bookends there. And I forget the one guy, the, the two guys in the middle. I, I'm sorry. Wonderful players. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is a... yeah, I don't know. Okay. But uh, anyway, I would really encourage you to make your reservation and check it out because you will hear some of the best guitar playing you will ever hear in your life. So uh, it's inspiring. Or, you know, it's uh, <laughs> expiring. You know, going to go home and burn your guitar. But... Uh, it's it's really really a good a good a good event. 
So anyway, did I plug that enough? Oh, the Nashville Hot Club. They played there. Uh, I forget. Pat Bergen, uh, Ferguson, or uh, was the guitar player. Wonderful band. The French family. Uh, they were fantastic. The, uh, him, uh, it was a father and his wife and his son. And uh, I, I think it's this, the, and then a bass player. Oh, no. And then a drummer. And and my gosh, they did all these double leads. Oh, sounded so sweet. So anyway, that that is a super cool event. Anything else you want to add about that, Wes? Uh, no, I was not a part of that. I did not go. Next year. Yeah. <laughs> no, no additions for me. Okay. Um, other than wrap it up and let's move on. Okay. Right. It's wrapped up, moved on. So did wrap. you, <laughs> Oh, is that what that means? I, I didn't, I thought you were signaling to steal. Oh, that's wrap. Okay. Did, here's a 1969, uh, Gibson L4. I heard one of these, a guy was playing it in Disneyland of all places, right? At the, uh, uh, New Orleans Center, you know, square. And uh, I thought, man, that thing sounds really, really good. And so I found one of these. When I got it, it's just very interesting. The pickup had gas, the pick guard had gassed off, but the, and the pick guard pickup was all green. And by the way, it was a gold pick guard, a pickup, gold pickup, but it had silver uh, or chrome hardware. So the tuners are all original uh, and they're very stiff. I oiled them and tried to get them to loosen up a little bit. They really need to be totally taken apart, but that's not a job I wanna do right now. And uh, the tone control wasn't working. Got the tone control to work. Uh, here's her volume and tone. And then it had this bridge on here, or this tailpiece. That's like brand spanking new. And I thought, God, it, it sticks out. You know, it's like, have you ever seen a new bumper on like a 54 Chevy that's be, you know, that just isn't restored, but the bumper is brand new. It just doesn't look right. So I did my best at trying to distress this a little bit. And I thought I did pretty good. So it's not, uh, it's not too distressed. And then this, pickup is a Johnny Smith. And, um, you know, this, I don't think was added on at the factory. I don't think the factory would do it like this, but it, especially since I think this is a, a, a replacement pick guard because the old one must have gassed off, but the guitar is in beautiful shape. I love the neck on it. The frets, have, it's been refretted. And I thought, man, I, I dig the sound of this. Do you guys like the sound of this? Uh, so anyway, let's play. So uh, let's play a tune. You want to play a tune, Wes? Yeah. <laughs> do it. All right. Well, this we'll use a track. I'm going to do all of me. Do this again. Thank you. 
I wanted to play that song is because um, be, uh, the reason is because we're, I'm going to show you some licks out of that tune. That's why. You know, that's a nice little tune. Probably everybody's got to know it. So, um, by the way, where did, has Stringbender 57 shown up this morning? He has not, has he? I haven't seen him. No? No, not Who yet. Who do we got here? Dave from Connecticut. Hello, Dave. Uh, Jay Morning, Mor uh, Morano. I don't know. Thank you, Jay. Owen Field. We have a question here, Wes. Could you repeat that question for me? Yeah. What do you think about using Telecasters for jazz? I know that some notable figures, Ted Green, Tim Lurch, Julian Lange, Ed Bickert, have used them. And I was wondering your thoughts. Well, they, you know, if, you, if it feels good, do it. You know, Ted's guitar, he hollowed out under the pickup. You know, this was all hollow. So some of these guys, you know, they're drilling holes all over the place and stuff to, to make them a little different. I do you want to do you want to let you know we I used to work at a, a, a music store and they got a bunch of telecasters in this is probably in the 70s no 80s and uh early 80s and the difference in the weight between them was just amazing like you pick up one and this thing would lay like Oh, I'm just guessing, you know, seven pounds. Pick up another one, it feels like only four, you know. So if you're searching for one, get a light one, uh, you know, really look around. But, uh, you know, whatever, it's really it's really the music you make with it. However, I must say a lot of people hear music with their eyes. When you walk in and, and you're going to play a jazz gig and, and you got a Fender Telecaster, some people might... Go mm. okay. I personally don't. I'm not into that. So anyway, um, what else? Um, let's see. Uh, Sc one, working on your blue set lesson today. Oh, oh, that's Andre, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Danielle, Danielle Emberly asks, on those fast single note fills, are you picking every note? Any slide tricks there to give the illusion of faster speed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, uh, you want to play, you want to play with uh, really is the less pick strokes, the better. So you want to make sure you're, you're, Number one, doing 
economy picking. So each uh, on ascending passage is on three notes on a string. You're always approaching it with a downstroke. And you're already on the string, so you just push through. The obverse is that, is pull up, start with an upstroke. Now, the other thing is you play with the less ham with hammers. So like a scale might look like instead of like this, where you're picking every note. Now that's up, that's alternate picking. That's the slowest thing you could probably do. But going like this, you know, here's economy picking. And then there is what I call slurred picking, where each string just gets one pluck. So this hand will slow you down. This hand, yeah, you, you want to use a combination of slurs. I don't know what, what I did. Let's see. You know, like I look like that. You just, you know, you're going to use just slides and hammers and pull offs. And that's the beauty of the instrument. You know, you can do that. So, yeah, you want to work on that, practice that. Is that Robin Riggs? Uh, yeah, Mark Larkins. Uh, greetings, Rich, from East Tennessee. Oh. Would love to hear you play just a bit of All the Things You Are. Oh. Just a bit. With the group? I mean, with the track? I don't know, Mark. Do you want to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. Yeah, you know. want the track or fingerstyle? Let us know in the comment section and we'll get right on that <laughs> we aim to please you know robin says <laughs> did his telly sound better that way i'm thinking of doing that well yeah um i think it did i mean i i didn't hear it before but that's what he did you know so by the way you know who owns that telly keith richards are you talking about this uh yep that well, is that the one? That looks a little different to me. That might be it. Maybe that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't know. One of them. I don't know. So his thumb is so much bigger in every hmm. sense than what happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you know, I, I yeah, you know, I miss that guy. I didn't, you know, didn't hang out with him or anything, except in the early days. But, you know, it, by the way, you know, uh, we went and saw that new Elvis movie. And uh, wow, that is really a, a powerful movie. And it's really done super well. Not, not like uh, you would think it was done. I felt like they left out a lot of important parts, but how do you cover that? I mean, it's a two and a half hour movie. How do you cover a lifetime in two and a half, even though he had a short life? But Elvis, uh, the guy who played him did incredible. Music was incredible. And, uh, you know, I say, it's like you kind of miss Elvis, you know, you get done with that. Oh, which reminded me, I was going to play an Elvis tune. Oh, crap, I forgot. Oh, well. Oh, is that I Can't Help? Yeah. Out? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. On the, on the printer. Oh, it's on the printer? Yeah. Well, if you don't bring it out, honey, I, I, maybe I hacked my way through it. But that's a great, great 
little arrangement for that too. Um, Andre asked, aren't the pots in tellies the wrong type for jazz tones? Oh, because they're what, two and a half K instead of 500 or vice versa? I don't know. You know, Ted, Ted was a whiz at all that kind of stuff. That'd be a question for Rob. Hey, Rob, what do you think? Rob knows all about pots and all that stuff. Uh, he's a pothead. Uh, electronic pothead. <laughs> wow, this is like, oh, there should be two pages. Oh, uh, there's, I only saw one page on there. Oh, really? Oh. Thanks, honey. We need the second page. Ah. Yeah, I think you need to reprint it because there's only one one page on the printer that I saw. Oh, okay. All right, we'll do that next week. <clears throat> you know, you can always, when you script this week, we can always fix it next week. So um, <clears throat> uh, there's some more questions here. Uh Rich, do you see any value to memorizing specific rhythmic phrases to be used to strengthen your improvising? I learned a few rhythms years ago that were based on big band lines. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, rhythm is the most important element of music. So you want to learn as much rhythm things as you can. If you just play all straight eighth notes for things, you know, like comping on all of me or something, it's a drag. So, um, you know, uh, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you, the rhythmic idea is much better. play more rhythmic it's it's easier it's more fun it's uh you don't have to think as much you just find a riff play and a, grab a rhythm i mean you can play a rhythm figure throughout the, you know first eight bars if you wanted to let's see And hope 
hopefully you get the notes to work. Uh, thank you, Tom, for that question. Andrew Janison asked, uh, best arch top for around 3K. A yeah, guild? <laughs> well, guilds are wonderful. Uh, you got to check this out. Thanks for asking. Let me show you a couple of guitars that I just got. Here is a Eastman. Uh, you can't beat. I know they're built in China. Some people don't like that, but you know. But China people, you know, they, these are just people. They're not the communist government. They're just people um, <clears throat> that work in the government. Whatever they do, they you know, they're evil. The people that are trying to raise their kids and a family, they're just people. But anyway, this village builds guitars, right? And Eastman is, they build orchestra, uh, orchestral instruments. And this is a, I'm really pleased with this guitar. This is a Eastman 805. Um, solid spruce top, 16 inch body depth, solid maple sides and back. This one has had the inlays added, and it's just a beautiful axe. Now, it's one and three-quarter nut width, so if you got fat hands, you know, it's a good one. Uh, and it's 24, in, excuse me, 25-inch scale length. So Gibson scale, like the guitar I was just playing, is 24 and three-quarter inch scale length, and fenders are 25 and three and a half. So that's in between. Hopefully it'll fit everybody's thing. It's got a volume control here. Did you turn this on? Yeah. There it is. Okay. And a tone control here. So uh, this is an 805, and I think it's in pretty darn good shape. Um, that's beautiful. And it's just a little bit out of tune. It's got a, uh, it's got a low not on the B string. Somebody cut the B string too low. So I got to fix that. Um, sorry, I should have tuned these up earlier. Excuse me. Isn't that a pretty sounding guitar? Very hollow. Here's what it sounds like acoustically. Got a lot of, a lot of tone. So I have two of these. I have this one in this color, 
with the inlays. And I, I've thought about keeping this because I could teach with this one. But then I look in my closet and say, God dang. You kind of have to have inlays to teach. And uh, I have this other one over here. And this one's in dark finish. Uh, this doesn't have a tone. I got to show them the neck on this, Wes, because it's crazy cool. The guitars, this is like the classic finish that Eastman builds. This one has a few more dings on it. But look at this neck. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that, I, I've never seen an Eastman with that, that neck. It's just gorgeous. And uh, this is an 805 as well. Got a little, you know, different years, different tail pieces. And like I said, or did I say this? Uh, this one doesn't have a tone control. So I have ordered one and I'm going to put one on it. Because I think that's kind of nice to have that. So uh, I'm going to get this, this ready with a, a tone control. But you see, when I'm trying to teach and you've got, you know, somebody looking at your fretboard, it's, it's hard if you don't have inlays. Uh, but as far as just playing it, I don't care if they have inlays or not. Is this on? I haven't done anything. You got to plug it in. Sorry, while I get dressed here, it's like. I haven't done anything. I only restrung it and I'll work on this a little more. Anyway, so these guitars are around the $2,000 mark. So, 2000 Mm hmm. Yeah, that thing's noisy. It is? Can't you hear that? No. You can't hear that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Scary that you can't hear that. Yeah, you need a. Did we ever see anybody want. Uh, let's not play a song with that. All right. All right. All right. Well, I mean, it's buzzing really, really bad. It is. Well, the ground wire might have come off. I have to check it. When I got it, the pickup had fallen off the thing. So you got to, you know, I had to glue that back on, but I didn't. Uh, I wanted to wait to mess with the electronics till I get that some, some uh, a volume pot tone control. Okay, so. Uh, here are some more questions. For you, um, Jasper Gears. Uh, hi, Rich. Your thoughts on Ibanez jazz boxes, please. Well, um, <clears throat> you know the Art Core, the real low line ones. I wouldn't even bother with those. Don't. I, I'm. The guys have had those. And they just sound flat. They just. Don't sound good. Just at least buy something in the over 600 bucks, you know. 
I think you, you get what you pay for with guitars. They make one with a floating pickup a friend of mine had, and I thought that thing sounded pretty dang good. And uh, it was a cool guitar. Seemed like the fretwork was good. Well, here's the deal. You know, they got all these machines that can do these things now. And, and they, they cut it. And, you know, I just question the wood. They make so much, so many guitars. How do they get the wood? Sometimes the wood is so green. It's <clears throat> You need a can of Roundup in case it might sprout. In case it might sprout, you know, so <laughs> that's a joke. Um, so I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, they also have the poly finish on them. So it's very, uh, you know, it dries chemically. It'll, it seals up the wood. It'll, it'll never change. The wood is not breathing, which is a good and a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. So um, to be honest, I don't know. Talk about buzz. Okay, how's that? The old Ibanez uh, guitars are awesome, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. When they were doing the knockoffs, trying to do the L5 and the Johnny Smith and stuff. And yeah, those have gone up so much in price. They're what the real deal was. Uh, Chip Q says, uh, I think JD Simo played most of the guitar stuff on the Elvis movie. He is a heck of a player. Do you know who J Sim Simo? No, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, was it cut in uh, uh, Nashville or was it cut in uh, Hollywood? No idea. Um, let's see, Andrew. Janison has. Do you still have the guitar with the three five seven nine inlay? <laughs> yeah, no, I do. That's my uh, John Pisano. I'll probably never get rid of it. I had John sign it, and uh, when I put those on there, you know, I thought, and you know, it's funny. I, that video where I did a lesson with those on there, it got like. Tons and tons of hits, and everybody's making fun of those numbers. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Now, uh, Wes, uh, your mom said she didn't hear any buzz yeah, either. Yeah, most people said they didn't hear the buzzing, but it was loud in here. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't we'll know. We'll have to check it out. I'm going to get new things for it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was loud enough to where I needed you to put it away. Okay, okay. For, for sure. Well, that, that was annoying. Thanks for the endorsement. We're trying to, you know, move that guitar. But I mean, if I knew that they, they, no one else was hearing it, I uh, wouldn't have said it. Uh, Andrew in Wonderland, Bob Weir played a guitar that looks just like that. Uh, I'm guessing it's, was that it's, second Eastman? Oh, really? Oh, cool. Uh, Andrew in Wonderland, that would give you a very Django kind of sound. Uh, Andrew Janison, also, do you use acrylic nails on your right hand? So, uh, when I uh was you know doing finger style stuff and a nylon string, and you know, I always had my regular nails and I tried to keep real good care of them, but I'm was kind of, I'm, a, I'm kind of a do it yourself guy, and so when you do work around the house and uh you break a nail. And so you got a gig coming up and it's like, Oh no, man, I just broke my nail working on, you know, something in the garage or something. So then, um, you know, Dale or not Dale, uh, Doyle Dykes. I was at a thing with Doyle and Doyle and his acrylics. And he said, Rich, why don't you just get acrylic nails? And so I did. And I had them for many, for a long time. And it was a running joke, you know, for Father's Day. I, your dad's going to go down and get his nails done. You know, so my the family had a real good time with that. <clears throat> but what happens is it destroys your nails underneath. So you, you got to keep going back and do the filling and all that. But And it destroys your nails. You end up getting a fungus and all that stuff. So uh, I just... Forgot 
didn't do that and and just went to doing a uh, as as my nails you know got rid of those the nails got stronger but still if I break one then I I just use a plastic one and put it on there so this well it does sound different now. wow you hear how mellower that one is I don't use my little finger. Ted used to use his little finger. But um, so I, I just put it on as needed. But I didn't even notice how mellow that one was. And I used to have one on my thumb. And now I don't anymore. I don't know. <clears throat> so, uh, but these kind, you super glue them on. Or you can, if you get the press on ones. The press-on ones work incredibly great. The Lee press-on nails. I don't know why somebody doesn't in invent a guitar player fingernail that's easy to deal with. Well, maybe you should. Talk to Lee press-on. <laughs> Revlon. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Revlon. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, Chip Q didn't hear the buzzing. Jeff Paget didn't hear the bu buzzing. TJ says, oh, hey, Rich, good to catch you live. I don't oh, know who T thanks for like is. Uh, Gail didn't hear the buzzies either. Rags Dirt says, I totally love the Guild X700 that I got from you, Rich. Oh. Yeah, who, who is that? Rags Dirt. Rags Dirt. Oh. <laughs> that was a super nice one. I have another one. But um, it's kind of been sitting up there waiting for me to figure out what I want to do with it. Um, I think I want to keep it. TJ says, I got an AS-103 semi-hollow. That's been my main workhorse for a long time. AS-103. I don't know what that is. Uh, um, but anyway, that's good. Thank you for letting uh, us know. Jeff says those Eastman arch top guitars that I've played are exceptional instruments. True. Uh, Timothy Newfield. Oh, hi, Tim. Uh, I'm getting older, turning 60 soon. Any tips for keeping hands, shoulders, etc., in shape? Well, hey, take your vitamins. Yeah, take your vitamins. The uh, hair, you know, calcium. The hair, skin, and nails stuff, collagen, all that good stuff. And then uh, try to put your hands when they hurt, put them in ice water and then in hot water. Don't let that inflammation stay in your hands overnight and stuff. I mean, I, I, don't, do, I don't do it at night, but sometimes I'll put on uh, Tiger Balm and DMSO. You got to make sure your hands are super, super clean when you do that. Tiger Balm. They're sore, Tiger Bomb, and then uh, DMSO, and it pushes that stuff in there, really gets it. You'll have to bring out your DMSO sometime because that's we, it's hard to find that stuff. It's not, it, there, it's it not is. everywhere, but, and people have no idea what it is. And it's yeah. like people, it's like a cleaning agent that they, they use. use it. Uh, it's it's uh, they used it on horses. Horse leg, leg up. Uh, they use it on all kinds of stuff. It's dangerous. It is dangerous, yes. Uh, so, yeah, before you go tell anyone, just start using it. Read the directions before you. Oh, it says, yeah, don't put on your hands. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've been doing it. Put it on your hands, and then you rub your eyes, and I can touch your... Uh, yeah, go to the bathroom. Keep your, keep your hands out, out of there. Yeah. Uh, Especially with Tiger Bomb. You don't want that in there. Right. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Well, um, Tony, uh, who is a, um, a doctor, he, he, he made me some cream <clears throat> with the MSO in it. Anyway, whatever. Rags Dirt is Mike Walker. Yes, Mike. You and uh, your wife's name, Skyler. 
I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, They're in Florida on a boat. Nice. Rough life. Uh, TJ uh, said his AS-103 is an Ibanez model in reference to our combo earlier about Ibanez guitars. Oh, okay. So there you go. And Ibanez AS-103 could be, could be good for you there, Jasper. Uh, <laughs> Richard Stancius. Uh, yeah. Hello, Rich. Any advice for someone with a bad thumb on my fretting hand? Oh, that's what I worry about. That's what I worry about is my wrist. Because, you know, your wrist and your thumb. Man, I've had issues uh, over the years sometimes with a, a thumb. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I had a trigger finger at one time. I don't know why it went away. I don't know why I got it. I had a trigger finger and then it just kind of went away after. But I've been using this stuff that I just told you about for quite a while. And uh, I'm not dead yet. And it, I think, helped a lot. So take it for that. I, don't sue me if you, you go blind or something. Um, do, do your research. But I don't, I don't know what to tell you on, on your thumb, man. Just take good care of it. Get Try to get some stuff in there. You know, another thing I used to do is just olive oil. I used to do just olive oil on your hands and just rub them like crazy. If you're sitting in front of the television, get you know some olive oil. That used to be good. And then olive oil with a little CBD oil and then smoke a couple, take a couple hits off your, your peak, whatever it is. It goes away quick. <laughs> but anyway, I did that with, with olive oil. Um, coconut oil is another good one. Just to, and just to rub your hands, try to keep them loose and, and I think that helps. Shoulder is another issue, man. When I had a, um, when I was playing like this, and I, I've got to redo a bunch of videos because I tell people, yeah, pretend you're shooting a gun and this is how you play an arch top guitar. Because that's how I was taught. And my shoulder went, went south. And when that happened, I, I sold my, all the fat body guitars and I got a real, skinny Chet Atkins, and that's what I played. And then I came to realize I'm holding the damn guitar wrong. If you hold it like this, cross your body, the shoulder doesn't, is okay. This shoulder, get a good bass strap. I think you'll be fine. But yeah, you gotta watch yourself. If, you're, if you really start starting to hurt while playing, probably stop and figure out what you're doing wrong. I used to also play like this, like the classical method, which is very true, you, how, you, how you do it. You know, finger for each fret. Oh, my hands are screwed up. Um, but lately, you know, I just kind of play like this. I don't know. Whoops, did we go? No, you're good. You're good. Uh, uh, Jeff Paget says, um, strings by, or yes, yeah, strings by mail sells special guitar related nails, different materials, etc. Oh, strings by mail. I'll have to check them out. Definitely. Uh, no, I'm trying to see if I could get this audio bar up here i'm just messing around with this real quick hold on yeah let me pushing buttons hey wes you got any news you want to do some news uh yeah in one second here so i went to carter's vintage guitars in nashville now that was kind of fun and uh i got to see a bunch of guitars and one of them you know i saw some johnny smith's and 
There was a West Montgomery L5. Uh, there was a real nice guitar, and I thought, how'd I get this? Uh, and it was what, a Vega. A Vega. Remember those? And, uh, well, that's kind of neat. But I didn't, uh, didn't. I just tried to show some restraint. And, uh, but I did also see one of the chroma, one of the uh, solid formed Gibsons. You know, those guitars, they're where they press a solid piece of wood and it's their own thing so they don't have to carve it. And uh, so I got to see that guitar. And, you know, it, it, it's, I'm sure, great. I didn't. You know, I just strummed it, and it sounded nice. I didn't just on the shelf. It, it, you know, it was pretty loud. But you know what? It kind of bugged me about it. Is like, you know, these guitars that are, you know, they want. I think they wanted like seven thousand dollars, five thousand dollars for this thing. And come on, do you really single ply binding all around uh, on a guitar of that? in that price range, I, I think it's, it's, it's like, I know single ply binding will, will last longer, but you know what? It doesn't look as good. And when you are trying to sell a guitar for five grand and then you put crappy bind, you know, just run of the mill binding, look at the binding on this. Wes, go, go close to this on the binding on this guitar. I mean, look at that. Well, you you know, that's like seven ply binding there. And, and you know, it's prettier, you know, and the, everything's bound, the, the F holes are bound and all that stuff, even cheap guitars. But Gibson, for some reason, decided on this chroma burst guitar, you know, let's just use single ply binding. And it's like, Really? Yeah. I guess they do that so that makes the L L5, you know, more valuable or something. I, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what they think? Um, Daniel, Danielle, sorry, Emberly, uh, regarding inflammation, avoid sugar. That's a good one for sure. Eat a lot of vegetables and fruit, natural food. And that would help inflammation for sure. Inflammation soda. Is, soda is probably your worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. Don't eat. Yeah, we, <laughs> I, we don't drink. Well, we we drink. Uh, you know, some diet coke every once in a while. We go out, but that's about it. Uh, Chip Q. Any plans to cover the tune Cherokee on the library? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we should do it. It's such a fast tune. Um, we should do it. Yes, I'll, I'll do that someday. I, someday. Uh, Mike Roach, uh, he has used therapeutic magnets for 20 plus years. They increase circulation, warm tissues, and moves inflammation out. He had carpal tunnel surgery in the 80s. That left him with chronic scar tissue inflammation. Oh, so great. therapeutic magnets. Hmm. Well, I got a story about magnets. You know, I broke my leg really bad uh, one time. And uh, <clears throat> after it healed up, it just wasn't right. It hurt like hell and it just wasn't right. And so... Um, one of the uh, a guy that I, I knew that uh, owned a music store started selling these magnets, uh, and uh, he said, Rich, um, take this home and try it, just put a magnet there on your knee and see if that helps. So I did, I put it on my knee and went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I couldn't walk, it was so it was swollen. I mean. 
it hurt like it, it, it was those magnets do something. It's crazy. They, you know, so I think they just brought a lot of blood there and uh, which is good for healing, but uh, it didn't really get rid of inflammation. As a matter of fact, it caused a lot, but they do that. For my case, it did do something and it works. Now, see, I always wear this magnet here and I had them for my wrist. See this? These things, I always wear that. I, I've always, I've felt better since I put that on about four years ago. I don't know why, but it just, if I've got them for my wrists and everything. I don't use those because when you go out to eat and stuff, you, you put your hands down, you pick up your silverware, and now your silverware is hanging off your wrist. And so they're, they're real powerful magnets. Um, but, you know. That's that's good that that works for you. That carpal tunnel surgery, I'm very skeptical about. Um, that's got to be a last resort. And I I have a, a video online about uh, my carpal tunnel syndrome that uh, I had and what I went through with that. And turns out it was really in my neck. It really wasn't in my wrist. So, but I, I traumatize my wrist. Long story short, when your hand goes to sleep, or you want circulations, don't go like this with your hands. Don't traumatize your hands any more than they have to be. If you feel like you need more circulation, squeeze. Squeeze up here, okay? Uh, you know, don't start. I remember seeing Lincoln Blue. Brewster backstage, and he was waiting to go on, and uh, he stood, came out just violently shaking his wrist. I said, Lincoln, don't do that. My God, you're going to really, you're going to hurt yourself. I know, but I got to get circulation. But don't do that some other way. So I traumatized my wrists, and which kind of didn't help either. So it's a long story. We, we don't have time for all that. Uh, Lincoln Brewster, by the way, is a really good worship guitar player for people that don't know. Not a lot of people know who that guy is. Okay. Uh, anyway, Mark is back and says, uh, please play all the things you are with track or solo either way. Oh, dealer's choice. <laughs> uh, it's more fun with the track. I think. Well, whatever. I don't know. I will do both. Oh, let's do it as a samba. Hello? Oh. Yikes. You got a good balance? Yeah. Well, let's do that. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
There you go. Anyway, it's kind of a fun tune. Uh, all the things you are, you can do it as a swing, bossa nova, ballad. It's a long song as a ballad. Uh, it's a great little tune to do any way you want. Okay, Wes, you got any news? Sure. Let's listen to Wes's news. Uh, yeah. Then we'll do a lesson. So, uh, yeah, lesson, sweet. Um, sorry. Uh, let's see. We've all you we've all heard harmonics, right? You yes. Know. How about bubble harmonics? Yeah. Harmonics are you trying to this? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Harmonics. Yes. You know, everyone knows what they are, right? Sure. But bubble harmonics. How about that? Don't know. Uh, well, this guitar player, Don Aaron, out of Atlanta, uh, self-proclaimed inventor of bubble harmonics. Oh, I like that. Uh, sounds pretty hard to describe. So uh, here you go. We'll let you uh, hear it for yourself. This is Don Aaron out of Atlanta with bubble harmonics. Okay. Bubble harmonics pretty sounds kind of like bubbles, right? It does. How do you do that? Yeah. Do it. That's not too far off. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, this guy, so yeah, it sounds like he's got a bunch of effects on his guitar too, but he doesn't 
he has a little not much at all there's no delay whatsoever which, sounded uh, like there was delay yeah there's no delay on that track Ooh, at all wow. which is kind of crazy uh so yeah it's just like a basically basically a version of t like tap harmonics it says he got the was inspired by um van halen eddie van halen uh -huh. And uh, he, he also got the uh, the idea from this guy, Alan Gogol, who kind of does these bell harmonics. That's pretty cool too, right? Yeah. So those are the bell harmonics, but still, this one, this is better. This guy's, this guy's thing's pretty cool. Yeah. thought that was pretty cool so yeah um uh, says he's been working on this uh this technique since the early 80s and it mm -hmm. looks like he finally uh has it down so good job don aaron way to go um all right so everything's more expensive these days obviously skyrocketing <laughs> inflation that includes guitars all the accessories but now we're getting an idea of just how much it's costing some companies to keep producing gear. Uh, in an interview with Music Radar, Fender CEO Andy Mooney addressed the issue of rising costs for the company. He says some guitar components are a hundred times more expensive than they were just last year. Some com components last year cost 30 cents and now they're costing $30. Uh, one of the main components is for this little uh, Fender Mustang micro amp thing that they sell. Um, he says, uh, we're always trying to pivot to find new suppliers. Uh, internally, we refer to it as whack-a-mole because you feel like you've just solved one supply chain issue from a, a component point of view, and then something else rears its ugly head. So... Uh, he believes that they're going to be facing these little tiny component shortages for uh, the next year or so. Um, Fender also owns Presonus. Um, and oh, I didn't know that. he says, yeah, they took it over in 2021 and uh, <laughs> components costs got so high that he says other companies just said, we're going to stop making a bunch of stuff. Uh, he says Presonus kept going. Um, and they're still going to keep going, but he says it's been a real challenge to bring these products to market at a price that works for consumers and a price that works for uh, them as a manufacturer so they could actually make uh, money on it. When it comes to guitars, wood prices, obviously skyrocketing. Uh, but Mooney says it's all the little things that have been causing headaches for, for the Fender guitars, um, all the little components. Um, he says, quote, and it's funny where things will pop up, the winding materials in pickups, all of a sudden, one day, there's a challenge. You yeah. think that there's not a lot of many uh, components in an electric guitar, and then you realize there is uh, things like all of a sudden magnets were in short supply. Yeah, that's weird how that would happen, huh? Yeah, so uh, get ready for more expensive gear, for sure. I mean, you've already seen it. Um, definitely, but I'd imagine if something costs 30 cents last year and now it costs $30, I mean, that is, yeah, well, lot. then how could they, you know, in that unit tag on another $30 to that unit, right? Know, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, that's the unit itself is I, I don't even know how much they are, but it's I don't think it's more than a hundred bucks, but what are yeah. you going to double the price of it? So a bummer for these uh, music companies and bummer right. for us who have to buy music gear because we play yeah. guitar. Um, all right. So here's one for you. If you live and breathe guitars, uh, then I have a real estate investment. You should uh, 
probably look <laughs> into. So check out this house in Fayetteville, Georgia. See that? What I can't see what you're looking at. Oh, sorry. Fayetteville, Georgia. Oh my. <laughs> there you go. Uh from above, you can see it's shaped like an acoustic guitar. The roof even has a sound hole. See wow, that does the rain get in? Uh I I hopefully wow. it's a skylight. Um but it belonged to a country artist named uh, Elvis Cardin. Uh, the ad on Realtor.com states that this guitar needs a slight tune-up and some <laughs> polishing. Um, the house does need some work, but uh, look at you can see just. I mean, it looks. Well, that's for the guy who's got everything. Huh? It looks just like a, an acoustic guitar. Yeah. So well, that's interesting. Yeah. So. Um, I have to go. Where'd you find that? Realtor.com. Yeah, yeah. What town is that in? Fayetteville, Georgia. Wow. Um, it's uh the five bedroom, uh five bed five bedroom four bath for seven hundred and eighty nine thousand built wow. in nineteen eighty six. Not a bad deal. Uh, but th there's no strings on the guitar. No strings attached. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they could put some power cables on the top or something. power lines yeah that that's a good idea and then uh yeah so anyway there you go if you're i can't wait to see the amp yeah if you uh it's actually a pretty cool house there it's huge i mean some of the in, inside photos are it's got yeah. some interesting rooms let me show you this one room i got, got some like look at that where kind of oh yeah weird corner of there when yeah anyway yeah it's good definitely a different house long um big but uh yeah pretty cool um let's see what else we got here um oh yeah we've talked about metallica on the show before yep. you know one of your sure. favorite bands yep for, yep you yep. love them i've got every one of their you love the singer, Cassettes. James Hetfield, especially. I, I do. Remember, he came out with the, the new strings. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the Ernie Ball string. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, anyway, well, a jazz guitarist and bassist uh, have created a, a jazz cover of one of uh, an old Metallica songs. And I must say, it sounds pretty dang cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll play the original version of the Metallica song first so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I'll play the jazz version second. So this is uh, Seek and Destroy from back in 1983. Where that ice picture the court is. beautiful. I like the video. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you hear it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Great tune. Nice family friendly tune there. Uh, but check out the, the jazz version of it. It's pretty, pretty dang cool. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, not bad, right? Pretty, no, I like pretty it. sweet, I like it. right? I like it. So this <laughs> is a uh, guitar guitarist Dan uh, Barazu and nice. bassist Joseph Patrick Moore teaming up to make this song. Uh, they re released it uh, earlier this month on YouTube. And yeah, to me, the, the jazz version, it totally works. It's totally creative. I like it. I, I like love it. his octaves, too. His, his guitar sounds awesome. Yeah, that's a Gibson 135. I I, uh, I almost bought a few. Of, I've had a couple of those over the years. And he actually uses the Big, Bigsby, too, on, on a couple, sure. couple yeah. parts of it, which is a little different for, for jazz. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I thought that was pretty rad. Uh, you don't hear that very often, so... So yeah, we'll have to uh, you have to get on the ball and start working on your own Metallica cover since you're such a big fan. Yeah, can't believe you haven't already done that. So. Well, it's on my list of things to do. Yeah, you might actually get followers on here if you, <laughs> if you did it. Uh, so it's yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's always that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's guitar news for this week. Okay, so, well, thanks, good job, Wes. Lot. Thank you. Peace out. Good job. It's always good to keep up with the latest, greatest things that are happening in our world today. Yeah, and the, the Guitar House. Don't forget to put a bid out on that. I have the Guitar House. I, I'm all over that, like ugly on a monkey. Okay, so, you know. Um, Let's see. We do you have one uh, one quick question here from Jay Mormino? Mm -hmm. Rich, what is your opinion on Gibson Custom Shop versus Gibson USA Production semi hollow guitars? Gee, I have no opinion. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, Custom Shop. Uh, you know what I liked when I first got with Heritage, I and I was talking to Greg Delordo, and he was saying, you know, talking, describing it, and I said, "So you mean the whole factory is a custom shop, basically?" That's a good description. Yeah, that's what it is. Of course, things have changed. So you know, custom shop is nice. You could you can pick pick and choose what you want and all that. Um, doesn't mean the wood's any better. Uh, it might be. You can get up, upgraded triple A spruce and stuff. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know you pay for it. I know you pay for it. And it's, but uh, whatever. Uh, Chip Q. The guy said, he says on the, the clip that uh, there's no delay on that bubble harmonics thing. So. Maybe oh. he's lying. I thought I. I, I thought I. I thought. I mean, there. I was like, there's no way you could do that without it. But he says so. I don't know. We'll have to take uh, his word for him. Look him up on YouTube, Don. Uh, Don so it took forty Don, years to perfect this. Don Aaron. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, he's been working on it since early Van Halen records came out. Yeah, good for him. Anybody, you know, it, it's hard to get anywhere in this business. And uh, anybody who does, uh, hats off to you. So, uh, and create something new. That that's that seems to always be the thing. You know, uh, it seems to me everything's got to be greater and more, sen you know, more sensational than before. It's all this sensation stuff, like Lady Gaga wearing a meat suit, you know. What's the point? You you know it. It's just it's sensationalism. Everything's got to be bigger than the other, you know. And what's happening? Yes, you, you just can't make music, you know. It's got to be over the top stuff. You know. I sound like an old man. Anyway, uh, well, I was going to show a, a, a lick. Um, but did we already do that last week? The last week we didn't have a live stream. Yeah. Because yeah. it got all screwed up. And uh, so do your lick. Okay. All right. So uh, the first um, the first four bars of all of me go from C chord. All of me. Why not take East 
nine. Oh, let me, let's learn a, a little lick here. For, for this, we're going to go, here's what it sounds like. That's our first lick over the C chord. Now, when you think about this lick, what are we doing? Here's part of a C. Here's uh, the sixth of the C, but then we're playing these two notes. That's an, uh, here, right here is a, a B augmented or G augmented. And then, so. Okay. Now, the next lick over the E7 is something like this. So we're going right up a B minor chord, working our way to the third of E. Hear how that is just right down at E dominant seven, ending on the third. So we have Okay, so if you get an idea, uh, the first idea here is we're playing this C chord, but then we're going to this, back to G and then to this. For the E7, we're actually playing this to this. All right, if we take and expand on that idea, we might could do something like this. Oh, uh, no, never mind. just expanding on, on those ideas. So here's the lick. Okay, nice little lick. And I've got a complete solo here all written out for you. And if you learn it, you're going to pick up a bunch of licks on there that you can use in other tunes. So by the way, has any nobody's commented on the sound of this guitar. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this guitar because it's kind of kind of uh, it's different than I'm used to playing, and I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Well, what do you think, Wes? Do you think shall we call it a day? Uh, yeah, it's been an hour and forty minutes, and we haven't gotten kicked off yet. Yeah, no, this bypassing the uh, Streamlabs software might be the way to go. Yes. Um, Although, do you see yourself backwards on the screen there? No. Do I? You, on the screen here, you don't look backwards? I don't know. I always look backwards when I look in a mirror. Well, it's not, shouldn't it be like looking, you're not looking in a mirror, you're looking at a monitor with <laughs> a picture in it. I mean, no, no, it doesn't look backwards to me. Oh, because it looks backwards over here on mine. It does. Huh? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's weird. All right. So in hindsight, check out the CAAS, the Chad Atkins Appreciation Society Convention. Go to it, man. You'll love it. Um, and uh, if you're interested in either one of those guitars, I'll be... Uh, Happy to entertain and talk to you about them. And I think that's about it. Uh, look for the uh, Upper Lazy River arrangement. I hope to have it uploaded by this evening. And uh, I think that's it. I Gosh, we had a good day today. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. You know what? I liked Robin Riggs' comment here. Up here when, when he said, <laughs> the guy, uh, Tim's turning 60. Rob says, 60, what's the point of getting up? <laughs> oh, to be 60 again, right, Rob? And uh, well, there was another something funny on that. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, thank you for uh, your comments and questions and 
I'll talk to you later. See you next week. Talk to you later. Have a great, blessed week.